Hey guys, this is Caleb from the Command Valley coming at you with another Ikoria Deck Tech. Here on the Command Valley we talk about all things Commander, provide you with weekly deck techs to help you brew, gameplay videos, and so much more. The latest episode of our gameplay series, Duel of the Peaks, is out, so be sure to click the link in the description to check it out. Before we get into the video, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our channel's sponsor, GameGrid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, you need to check out their store. They've got an amazing card archive, a huge selection of card and deck accessories, and incredibly helpful and friendly staff. Also, please be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs and other videos. We truly appreciate your support. With all that out of the way, let me introduce this week's commander, Nethroi Apex of Death. Nethroi costs 2 generic, 1 white, 1 black, and 1 green to cast. He is a 5-5 legendary creature cat nightmare beast. He has an alternate mutate cost that is 4 generic, 1 white green hybrid, and 2 black. He has death touch and lifelink, and lastly and most importantly, the reason that we are building this deck is because he also says, Whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This ability makes him truly the apex of death. Mutate is a unique and sometimes confusing new ability. I'm not going to talk about all the different interactions that creatures with mutate have, but if you have any questions about mutate, and if you're viewing this deck tech on YouTube, please feel free to leave a comment below. The most important thing to probably remember when it comes to mutate is that you cannot mutate onto a human, so be super careful not to include too many, if any, in your deck. Let's dive right into the strategy of building a Nethroid deck. Obviously, we are going to be trying to use his mutate ability to generate us a ton of value by reanimating as many creatures as we can from our graveyard, but what should we reanimate? The thing that made me want to talk about and build Nethroi is that there are tons of different ways that you can take this deck. You can go with Aristocrats, Zero Zero Tribal, combos with creatures that instantly win you the game, a go wide token strategy, etc. I'm going to be focusing on what I thought would be the most fun and that is a 0-0 tribal with plus one, plus one counter and self mill sub theme. And of course, I've also included some combos that can pretty quickly win us the game. So what creatures are we going to try to reanimate with Nethroi? Creatures with base power and toughness 0-0 were practically made for Nethroi and there are a lot of good ones. Almost all of our options are creatures that get plus one plus one counters when they enter the battlefield like Pelucranos Unchained. Pelucranos costs two generic, one black, and one green to cast. He is a zero zero and says, Pelucranos enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on it. It escapes with 12 plus one plus one counters on it instead. If damage would be dealt to Pelucranos while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove that many plus one plus one counters from it. He also fights another target creature for 1 generic, 1 black, and 1 green, and escapes for 4 generic, 1 black, 1 green, and exiles 6 other cards from your graveyard. Pelucranos is super flexible, is target removal on a creature, and he is exactly the kind of 0-0 monster we want to see in our graveyard when we mutate Nethroi. Colonian Hydra is another absolute monster in this deck, and I hope you've got one or two just lying around like I do, because he's a bit on the expensive side. It has Trample, and it enters the battlefield with 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and whenever it attacks, you double the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on each creature you control. Colonian Hydra is super important for our strategy because we're going to be attempting to reanimate as many of these 0-0 creatures that come into play with plus 1 plus 1 counters as we can when we mutate Nethroi. And then we're going to go for an ultimate swing to knock everybody out. So Colonian Hydra gives us a huge boost when we go for that ultimate swing. We'll go over exactly how to knock all of our opponents out swiftly and overwhelmingly in just a bit. The dreaded Phantom Neshoba was an absolute nightmare for me to play against as a kid and every time my buddy would get to 7 lands, I would silently pray that he didn't have this thing in his hand. Years later, I'm finally picking one up because it's time my enemies shared my fear. Even though Phantom Neshoba isn't as scary as he was 15 years ago, he still gets 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters when he ETBs, he has lifelink, and if damage would be dealt to him, you prevent it and remove just 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter from it. I love this guy, and he's super cheap, so if you're gonna build Nethroid, definitely pick him up. Because we are going to be running a plus 1 plus 1 counters matter sub theme, 
Cards like Multani Yavamaya's Avatar are good, but not the greatest. He has Reach and Trample, and he gets plus one, plus one for each land you control and each land card in your graveyard. And you can pay two and return two lands you control to your hand to return him from your graveyard to your hand. He's good in other strategies that have to do with lands, but remember that we're going for that plus one, plus one counters theme. So make sure that you stick to creatures that ETB with the plus one, plus one counters, unlike Multani. Here is a list of other possible creatures that you can include in your deck for this category. Custody Soulbinders, Daghatar, Gave Guru of Spores, Hero's Bane, Noosegraph Mob, Oathsworn Knight, Phantom Flock, Rayhan, Last of the Abzan, Seki, Season's Guide, Spike Weaver, Witigo, and Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. As I said, there's a lot and these aren't even all the possible options that you have. Remember that cards with Star Star as their power and toughness or Star 3 in Renata Call to the Hunt's case do not count as zeros in the graveyard or anywhere else. Renata's power is equal to your devotion to green. So if your devotion to green is 10 and she is in your and she is in your graveyard, she still has 10 power and would be the only card that you could bring back with Nethroi. Our next category of cards is Self Mill. Self Mill is going to be an important part of our strategy because we need to get creatures into our graveyard. There are tons of cards that you can use in this section of the deck. These cards come in a few different forms, such as cards like Golgari Thug, which has Dredge, Grizzly Salvage, which is an instant that lets you reveal the top five cards of your library, put a creature or land from among them into your hand and then the rest into your graveyard, and creatures like World Shaper that put cards from your library into your graveyard when they do something. Other Dredge cards you can play include Life from the Loam, Stinkweed Imp, and Dakmore Salvage. If a card like Life from the Loam, which has Dredge 3, is in your graveyard, anytime you would draw a card, you could instead put exactly three cards from the top of your library into your graveyard, and if you do, return it to your hand. This is a great way to mill yourself essentially for free. Like Grizzly Salvage, you can play Commune with the Gods, Corpse Churn, Gather the Pack, Grapple with the Past, Mulch, Ransack the Library, Scout the Borders, Sudden Reclamation, and Winding Way. I wouldn't suggest running this many, but like I said, you've got a lot of options. And most of these cards have similar costs and effects, so run the best of whichever ones that you've got. A really interesting card that I'm excited to try out for the very first time is Morality Shift, which is a sorcery that costs 5 generic and 2 black to cast. And it says, exchange your graveyard and library, then shuffle your library. One interesting rule about Morality Shift that may come up for you is that if either your graveyard or your library is empty, this still works. So be careful playing this crazy card. Other creatures that you can include are Acolyte of Affliction, Doom Whisperer, Glowspore Shaman, Mire Triton, Nyx Weaver, Seder Wayfinder, Stitcher Supplier, and Underrealm Lich. If you're sitting on a good amount of life, Doom Whisperer can be an absolute powerhouse. Nyx Weaver is an all-star in a deck like this because of its ability to return a card from your graveyard to your hand by paying three and exiling Nyx Weaver. Not to mention, it is putting cards into your graveyard every turn. Underrealm Lich is awesome card selection and is almost like a Sylvan library that fills up our graveyard for us. Definitely run these three creatures if you have them. You might be wondering what you should do if you end up with Pelucranos or Phantom Neshoba in your hand instead of in your graveyard where you want it. You might as well play Pelucranos because he's awesome and he is only a 4 drop, but what about Phantom Neshoba that costs as much as our commander does to mutate? You can always discard your reanimate targets using cards like Fauna Shaman, Liliana of the Veil, Lotleth Troll, Putrid Imp, and Trained Pronghorn. Fauna Shaman does double work in our deck by discarding our reanimate targets and grabbing other creatures exactly when we need them, or parts of our combo packages. Liliana is crazy expensive to buy, but she'll do tons of work, especially if you can protect her for multiple turns. Lotleth Troll is a 2-1 zombie troll that costs 1 black and 1 green to cast. It has Trample and pay 1 black to regenerate it, making it a great target for Netheroid to mutate onto, and an ability that allows you to discard a card at instant speed to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Lotleth Troll. 
Putrid Imp also helps us to fill our graveyard by allowing us to discard cards at instant speed in order to give it flying until end of turn. Trained Pronghorn is the same, except by discarding a card, you can prevent all damage that would be dealt to it until end of turn. Another great discard option is Greater Good, which is an enchantment that allows us to sacrifice a creature to draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power, then discard three cards. This can help us get value out of creatures like Pelucranos while they're still on the field by turning them into card draw, and the ability to discard other cards that we can later grab out of our graveyard with Netheroi. The most accurate way to get exactly what we want into our graveyard is with cards like Entomb, Buried Alive, Corpse Connoisseur, Final Parting, and Gerard's Orders. These cards allow you to search for creatures and other cards that you might want in your graveyard straight from your deck. Buried Alive is absolutely nuts. It gets us three potential targets for Netheroi to reanimate. Entomb is the same, but for just one card and only one black, and it can actually search for any card, not just a creature. Gerard's Orders and Final Parting are great for grabbing win cons and or combos that don't care if part of that package is in the graveyard because we can always reanimate it with Netheroi or another reanimate spell. Moving on to Ramp. Ramp should be an easy thing to come by since we're playing green. You've got the obvious cards like Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Farseek, Rampant Growth, Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Sky Shroud Claim, Wood Elves, etc. However, let's also talk about some other ramp options that go really well with our commander and our strategy. Birds of Paradise is a classic mana dork that you can later mutate onto and is joined by Deathrite Shaman, Elves of Deep Shadow, Paradise Druid, and Sylvan Karyatid. Fabro Elder is an absolutely fantastic card in this deck because it is a 0-0, so we can get it out with Nethroi. It gets plus one plus one for each color among permanents you control, essentially making it a 3-3 in Nethroi. And he has Bloom Tender's much coveted ability to tap, and for each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color, and it's a tenth of the price. Great budget option. Migratory Great Horn can mutate onto one of our creatures early game to go find a basic land and put it into our battlefield, or it can be used as a card to mutate onto Nethroi, causing Nethroi's mutate ability to go off and return tons of creatures in the late game. With all of the self mill floating around in our deck, Splendid Reclamation has the potential to be a way better migration path or explosive vegetation by returning all of our land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Smothering Tithe can be an absolutely bonkers card, and if you haven't played it, and you have one, or you can fork over the cash for it, I suggest doing so. The Great Henge is currently pretty expensive as well, but if you have one and you want to throw it in, it's an incredible card that also slots in as card advantage. Jumping back to our 0-0 creatures that ETB with plus one plus one counters on them, let's talk about a few cards that we can include to beef them up. Hardened Scales, Peer Imaginative Rascal, and Widening Constrictor all basically say if one or more plus one plus one counters would be placed on a creature you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are placed on it instead. So if you cast Pelucranos with Hardened Scales on the field, then he will come in with seven counters instead of six. If Winding Constrictor and Hardened Scales are on the field, then Pelucranos would enter with eight. Corpse Jack Menace is a 4-4 that costs two generic, one black, and one green, and it doubles plus one plus one counters that are put on creatures you control. That means when Phantom Neshoba enters the battlefield, instead of getting seven plus one plus one counters, it will get 14. Doubling Season is an enchantment that doubles all effects that would make creature tokens as well as counters, but it costs a whopping 60 bucks at the time of this recording. Lastly, another enchantment that will get your army of 0-0 creatures even more plus one plus one counters is Cather's Crusade. For three generic and two white mana, it is an enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Remember that when you mutate Nethroi onto a creature, he is not entering the battlefield, so Cather's Crusade will not trigger there. However, if you bring back 12 creatures with Nethroi's mutate ability, then all of your creatures will get 12 plus one plus one counters when they ETB. Also note that even the creatures you reanimate with Nethroi will see each other as they ETB and will get plus one plus one counters for each one, including itself, assuming that it is still on the battlefield when the triggers resolve. 
It may be wise to pack some extra mutate cards as well as some specific creatures for Nethroid to target when he mutates. Cards like Silhanna Ledgewalker, Dungrove Elder, Troll Ascetic, and Witch Stalker all have Hexproof, making it much harder for your opponents to remove them in response to you mutating Nethroid. If you attempt to mutate Nethroid onto a creature, and one of your opponents removes that creature in response, then Nethroid would enter the battlefield normally without the mutate ability triggering. We want to stop this from happening by whatever means necessary because it takes a lot of work to get our graveyard ready for Nethroy. The best of the best is Thrun the Last Troll because he can't be countered, he has Hexproof, and you can regenerate him for one and a green. He's super good for this deck. Gemraiser, Necropanther, and Huntmaster Liger are also great in this deck and can get us extra value when we mutate Nethroy onto them or vice versa. If you ever need to, you can always stack Huntmaster Liger's and Nethroy's mutate abilities so that Nethroy's activates first, bringing in a ton of creatures, and then they can get a bit of a pump from Huntmaster Liger until end of turn. Though this is a bit of a corner case, we can make it, and the rest of our Nethroy strategy work way better with the cards in the next section. I promised you that we could swiftly overwhelm our opponents if we played our cards right. And the cards to play to make that happen are cards that will give our creatures flash. Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, Yeva, Nature's Herald, and of course, Vidalkanori can give our creatures flash. This includes Nethroi and any other creatures with Mutate when we want to mutate them because it is an alternate casting cost. Savage Summoning and Scout's Warning are super cheap instants that say, the next creature card you cast this turn can be cast as though it had flash. Mutating Nethroi and reanimating a ton of our creatures at instant speed at the end of our opponent's turn right before it's ours is the surest way of making sure that we can make use of Nethroi and our army of terrifying monsters right away. Crashing Drawbridge is another option that can give all of our creatures haste and it is significantly cheaper than Vidalkan Ori. Since the goal of our deck is to reanimate tons of creatures from our graveyard, it doesn't hurt to have some redundancy. Reanimate and Animate are both cheap to cast and can bring back a single creature from our graveyard. Eerie Ultimatum and Living Death bring back our entire graveyard. Playing one of these spells the turn after you cast Morality Shift is sure to load up your entire board, no mutations necessary. Now that we know what we want to get into our graveyard, how to get it there, and how to get it back out super quickly, how are we going to win? Well, since we aren't including a complex Aristocrats package, we're going to do it the old fashioned way, by beating face. Remember that we can reanimate up to 10 power out of our graveyard. So with many of our creatures being zero zeros, that gives us plenty of room to throw in Siege Behemoth and Pathbreaker Ibex. Siege Behemoth is a 7-4 with Hexproof that says, as long as Siege Behemoth is attacking, for each creature you control, you may have that creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Your creatures will still take damage, but you get to choose whether your creatures deal damage to your opponent's blockers or straight to their face. When Pathbreaker Ibex attacks, creatures you control gain Trample and get plus X plus X where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. With all of our plus one plus one counter shenanigans, hopefully this should pump our guys by a lot. Before we flash in Nethroy at the end of our opponent's turn, we could have also tutored up End Ray's Forerunners or Crater Hoof Behemoth. On our turn, we simply cast one of these insane beasts, pump up our recently reanimated creatures and give them trample, and then swing. That is GG right there. There are many infinite combos that we can choose to include and many different creature packages that we could bring back with Nethroy to immediately win the game, but the well-known Archangel of Thune and Spike Feeder combo is one of the easiest ways of not only gaining us infinite life, but also pumping our team of recently resurrected fatties beyond any reasonable limit. You can gain a billion life, give all your creatures a billion plus one plus one counters, and start swinging. Even if you don't have trample on your creatures and your opponents have 50 blockers, you're still gonna win that battle. If you want a really precise and simple combo that immediately wins you the game, you can always send Machaeus the Unhallowed and Triskillian to the yard and then bring them back with either Nethroi or by any other means. Machaeus and Triskillian are already good cards to run in this deck, 
but together they create a deadly two card combo. The way this combo works is Triskelion enters with three plus one plus one counters on it and can remove one at instant speed to deal one damage to a creature or player. Note that because it is a construct, Micaeus will buff it by giving it plus one plus one and undying. A creature with undying will return to the battlefield after it dies as long as it didn't have any plus one plus one counters on it. So remove one counter from Triskillion, deal one damage. Then because it would be a 2-2 two -two without its plus one plus one counters, remove the last two counters to deal Triskillion two damage, causing it to die. The Undying from Micaeus will then bring it back with an extra plus one plus one counter on it, and you can start dealing two damage to whatever you want an infinite amount of times. I know that we've already talked about this combo before, but it is a good one to include in Nethroi if you want something super quick and super simple. All right, you've made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. I have left a lot of the deck building decisions up to you and you don't have to include the super expensive cards or infinite combos if you don't want to. Nethroi is still sure to be a super fun reanimate commander. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to comment below and tell us what kind of crazy cards or combos you plan on pulling out of the graveyard with Nethroi. If you have any questions, and what other Ikoria commanders you'd be interested in seeing us do videos for. Also, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs, set reviews, and gameplay videos. Subscribing to our channel is the easiest way to help support us and it's completely free. We really appreciate all of your support. Thanks everybody, stay safe out there.